Islam, Sheikh Jazakallah Khair, um, for your talk. Uh, very um, insightful. Um, I want to ask you, um, Imam Nawi's life uh, is very humble, you know. He wasn't attached to the dunya. So uh, my person, living, me living in London, with a lot of luxuries available, a lot of food and, you know, a lot of this dunya is available. How do you advise us? Uh, because it's not possible to, because Imam Nawi would eat, how you mentioned, hard uh, dates, I think. Um, but it's for us very difficult. So we indulge ourselves in a lot of the luxuries. How do you advise us practically to just to be more humble and not let these kind of luxuries overcome us? Jazakallah khair. Hope inshallah in London. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I have to point out that our role model is our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not an Imam and Nawawi. So when we say that he limited himself to eating bread and dried figs and uh, uh, dried food and, and, and harsh food, this does not mean that we have to do this. I have to look into the diet of my Prophet and follow that. And if I look at the diet of my Prophet I find that he used to eat meat he used to love the shoulder of the sheep. And this is the most beloved part of it. He used to love to drink water that was sweet. And that is why they used to leave uh, some dates in the water until it becomes sweet. The Prophet ﷺ used to love to eat food that was good and was brought to him. And, and if you go to the book of Zad al-Ma'ad, you would find the different kinds of uh, collection of food that the Prophet used to love However, this was not the trend with the Prophet As Zubair ibn al-Urwah ibn Zubair, may Allah have mercy on his soul, asked his aunt Aisha bint Abi Bakr, may Allah be pleased with her and with her, with her father, and, and he said, what, uh, how, how was his diet? How, what, what did he used to eat at the time? She said to him, we used to see the crescent, then the crescent, the third crescent, and the, the, the fire would not be lit in the houses of our Prophet, meaning that they would not cook for two consecutive months. So Urwa said, then what did you eat? She said, we only ate dates and drank water. This is the only intake we used to have, dates and water, for two months. This is what the Prophet, this was the norm. Therefore, for those who are living in London, it is not the point by mentioning that his food was so hard and he did not wear good and fancy designer's clothes, no Calvin Klein and, and no Nenarici or whatever. This did, what I meant was that life was, was not so glamorous to him to the extent that he would go out of his way looking for it. Now, if you go to a normal family, you and I, for example, we have our objectives. So for the people of London, and I've been to London and I've met a lot of the brothers uh, uh, and sisters in London, they, for example, the main objective is to change the 40-inch plasma screen into a 52 LCD. This is, wow, the greatest objective. And they work over time and they do this and they do that. Is this what Allah wants from you? Definitely not. So you don't go to extremes in the sense that I'm in London, therefore I'm not going to take the tube, I'm not going to take buses, I'm going to walk, and I'm not going to put shoes on, I'm going to wake up, I walk barefooted, and I'm not going to eat at all, and I'm going to starve myself for three, four days so that I would become a scholarly-like person. Well, I guarantee you in a couple of weeks, you either go to uh, uh, a different mood and state completely, you'll be insane, or after a couple of weeks, you will go back into indulging full speed ahead into this life and taking everything that is permissible and not permissible as well. No, this is not the balance we're seeking. This is not the balance we're looking for. By giving the example of the life of Imam al-Nawawi, it shows us that we should not have 
this world, this life controlling our hearts. We have to reach a, lim a limit or a, or a level where we uh, uh, take control of our lives. And this is why we, we fast. We fast because Allah instructed us to fast. But one of the benefits of fasting is that you control yourself. The permissible things in life, eating, drinking, and having sexual intercourse with your wife, you make this forbidden for you. Why? Because Allah instructed me to do this. So if I'm able to stay away from these permissible things, then definitely I would be able to have the willpower with the grace of Allah to stay away from forbidden things. In London, you can be righteous, you can be God-fearing by not doing haram, by not letting this uh, uh, life control you. And instead, you control it. Don't let your objectives be worldly material. Don't let your main goal to boast about your car or your house or your body or your knowledge. On the contrary, devote all your forces, your uh, uh, concerns and your uh, ambition to attaining what pleases Allah Azza wa Jal and to be as far as possible from this uh, uh, glamorous, beautiful world in the sense that it would not divert you from worshipping Allah. And part of worshipping Allah is to excel in your school, is to excel in your job, is to be the role model to your co-workers by giving them the best example of a practicing Muslim who looks well, who smells well, who is polite, and at the same time who does not fall into sin, neither major nor minor, and Allah knows that.